Hi, I'm Josh and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today is a juicy one. It's gonna be all about men in relationships and a Q&A I put up as a poll on my Instagram story. So if you haven't already followed me on Instagram, please do. And of course, subscribe and put on that dingy bell for notifications on this channel. If you ever wonder why men ghost, why men fear commitment and how you can navigate that, then this video is gonna be for you. There was some brilliant, questions that came in and I cannot wait to answer them. Number one, Kiki. She said, my boyfriend said to not have expectations on planning the first trip. Oof. First of all, no, he shouldn't be projecting that upon you. You should have expectations, but it's up to you to be responsible to make them clear. Abandoning expectations is not the best strategy to uphold your self-worth and boundaries within a relationship. As famously put, Mo Gouldat said, when life meets expectations, we're happy. So completely abandoning that concept abandons your happiness. But let's get back to your boyfriend here. The reason he has an issue with expectations is put down to a few things. First thing is that he's pressured to perform. And if he doesn't meet that performance metric, he's gonna be failing you as the masculine. If he fails well, it's basically him feeling a perceived loss in the dominance hierarchy amongst males and thinks, oh gosh, another man could, could have done a better job than me. He feels a subconscious subliminal threat that you're gonna move on to a man that has or can fulfill your expectations. So he's protecting himself here. And this is a great segue into the second point about expectation. This is a self-worth issue on his behalf. He's worried that he may not meet your ideals, the ideals that you have potentially expressed to him with your vision boards, your ideals on movie, couple goals, situations. And so he believes that those ideals are far too beyond his ability. But this is very subjective about how vocal and expressive you are of your vision boards, your dream goals. And what's funny is that subliminally, although you don't mean it, the man still picks up on all of those larger than life examples. And so it really intimidates the man. It intimidates the man because a fantasy is very hard to achieve in reality. They sometimes become perfectionists themselves or look at that as perfection and see that as impossible to fulfill. So it's very much a very protective mechanism as you can see from your boyfriend here for having you not having expectations means he is protected. Flip side of the coin though is it could be very positive. He may just want to surprise you, which is the beautiful ideal scenario. So my advice to you here, Kiki, is to appreciate all that he's already done. This is just gonna build momentum and men or the masculine as it were, so this applies to all relationships, they love to be appreciated, they love to be nurtured and they love to be validated for their efforts. This will in turn affect his performance and his self-security within the relationship. It's a super win-win. So you're gonna be having more trips. The momentum will be built up into flowers, more post-it notes as words of affirmation. And, and as long as you're communicating that those are your needs, then brilliant, he will fulfill them. But just make sure you're appreciating him. All this appreciation will build momentum for the future and it will be a bright one if you get your needs fulfilled. But here's a little disclaimer to protect you and the relationship as a whole here at Kiki. Jazz and I have done this little question that you could ask your boyfriend. Ask him, how much do you know me? Funnily enough, Jazz said nine and a half. There's always that 0 0.5 or that segment to continually needing to discover. And what this is showing here is it does take a consistency, a proactivity within the relationship to completely be curious about your partner. Stop being lazy, stop sitting in your high horse thinking that there takes no work, no effort. There's no need for discovering more about your partner when really there is. We're forever evolving as individ individuals in our belief sets, in our values, and even with our dreams. So on his part, it is super important to keep the spark alive. So do expect consistency and proactivity because it can be made as an excuse, as I see here, for him underperforming. And underperforming means getting less than you deserve. So I hope that helped there, Kiki. Let's get on to number two. What do men seek in a woman in a conscious connection? Oh, that's a good question. I think what you're asking here is kind of how the feminine can treat the masculine in a conscious relationship. So first up, the masculine in the dynamic of the relationship wants to feel accepted and wants to feel honored for their masculinity. So 
never disempower the masculine by stealing their ability to, to prove their masculine. So ways he can show this off to you and you steal that from him, he might feel offended. It's why there's a huge topic around who pays the bill. Well, the man loves to pay the bill because it shows that he can be appreciated and it's a token and a gesture to show that he can uphold the ability to provide for you. And so if you steal that away from him and pay the bill instead, it's taken as an offense. And it's the reason why society thinks, why, why is there a big deal about the bill? Think about other things that require strength, decisiveness, purpose, freedom, and problem solving. Let him have all of those things to really shine. A surprising one is that men yearn to be just as vulnerable as women. As much as they may be culturally embedded within them to suck it up and numb up to maintain their position on the dominance hierarchy. So I say the second thing is that women create an emotional safety for men to open up. The problem that many relationships face is that w the woman and the feminine in the relationship always expects the man to be open, expects the man to be very communicative with his feelings. But that's not a realistic view of how the masculine deals with emotions. Sometimes they need the man cave to then process and start to solve their own emotional problems before they come back and rebound back to you. But essentially, the masculine doesn't want to be continually probed, continually badgered to open up. Maybe it's a bad time. Men really do live in the moment in, in their day and also they tend to have a daily period, as I put it. They don't have a monthly cycle, but they have a daily cycle. Don't be too critical, don't be too indicative, and don't be too probing, as it were, too nosy. Because the man might have had a hard day and the, the worst thing you want is a tangled up bottle ready to burst in, in your face. So create the conditions and a safe space when he's ready to come out of the man cave and open up to you. So a few things to remember here is that the masculine doesn't like to be mothered, doesn't like to be criticized, doesn't want to be shut out, and doesn't want to be continually asked or questioned about his performance or ability to show up emotionally. So funnily enough, the more resistance you can eke out of that emotional opening up, the better. Thank you for your question, Chloe. That was a beautiful one. Number three, Paula. Why do men give signals that they like you and then ghost? Wow, okay, ghosting is a huge topic. I think one of the most searched things on Google in the relationship spear. Spear. So it's worth remembering men are like rubber bands. So the more you pull it, there's gonna be great potential there. But remember, there's gonna be a, a rebound or a bounce back and soon expect that they will get the intimacy hangover. So let's dive into the hangover. As intimacy takes a lot of time, energy and that emotional vulnerability, they then need to retreat to regain and recharge their batteries, just like an introvert does in a social situation. Women may take this subconsciously, offensively, and kind of rightly so, because sometimes there's no explanation for their actions and they might just go quiet or reserve into the man cave, as we call it, and play video games for hours and shut you out. But the last thing you need to do is get take this sensitively, hypersensitively, and come into the, the negative feminine here and become catty, become bitchy, and become a little bit explosive in your actions because the masculine really just wants to rejuvenate to come back to you in a high intimacy setting again so don't take this personally and just be patient as this ghosting scenario occurs what's happened here he's got so close to you and he's just bouncing back he's ghosted because he might have just been scared of the commitment scared of that intimacy high but here is how you distinguish between a positive ghosting and a negative one. If there's no clear communication, he's gone into that cave, or he's completely gone silent treatment on you, it's time to move on. Sadly, the culture and society we live in allows men to kind of silence up. Use the man cave as an excuse to retreat. But this is toxic and inconsiderate behavior if they haven't fully communicated that they just need some more time. If they didn't communicate that, of course it's gonna impact you emotionally and you don't deserve to be in that position where he has too much leverage. If he's let you know about that and he's been openly communicative about his feelings and emotions, that's a positive green flag. And here's a few more questions I would advise. Is everything okay? I haven't heard from you in a while. Another one that isn't too invasive. Do you wanna talk about that? And finally, how can I support you? There are three smashing questions you can ask that dude. What I have to say here is that you should be treading cautiously. Some men have a transactional intention. They want your nurture, they want your affection for the short term. And if that's not your goal, then cut your losses. Or they could genuinely have been hurt in the past. The second scenario is a 
place that you can delve a little bit deeper. Try your best to distinguish the two intentions with the questions I provided before. And so to wrap that one up, look for emotional maturity and communication, the honest kind the integrity. Look for the genuine interest in you. Look for deeper dive conversations and a genuine effort that he wants to move things forward with you. From there, you can start to think about the future with this person to not leave yourself in that expectation gap we mentioned before. Rejection is a part of life and so if this person is ghosted, then please move on because there's better that awaits you. Okay, number four from Clara. What is the best way to attract a guy you know from social media? but you've lost touch. So what I can see here, Clara, is that you wanna put your best foot forward with this person. So the first thing I'd say is be genuinely curious. Be interested to be interesting. A famous quote by Dale Carnegie, how to win friends and influence people. But you don't wanna to act too keen. And here is what I've made up, the tiered intimacy disclosure. So the way this works is that you start with small talk. Show a little bit of your personality, your humor, your quirkiness, and your unique authentic self. And just like asking the weather, this is a place where you can't be too hurt. So starting off with small talk protects your emotional health. And if at that point you get some good responses, then that's when you have a token or a ticket to dive a little bit deeper. I would suggest to move things towards a physical and intimate setting. So as best as you can, move from a texty basis into a FaceTime, ask for a WhatsApp number asked to go on a date. So in a great way, this acts as a test for his keenness and also protects your emotional energy. Thanks for a brilliant question there, Clara. And I'm sure there's a lot of women out there trying to dive in or slide in to a crush's DMs. And I think that's the best way to navigate it. Number five, I love this one, Natalie. A boyfriend is very caring and sweet, but he never lets me help him. Oh, this is huge, 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 huge. So men love to provide from their essence. Providing and helping and nurturing him steals that away from him. And so that will have a knock-on effect to his worthiness. He'll feel like he isn't really upholding his role in the relationship. This is usually a projection from his past where he's potentially had parents that show this dynamic that the man is always providing, the man is always stepping up to the plate, and the man is usually just dealing with the problems stiff-lipped and numbing up his feelings and usually that's a case that he's just wanting to replicate sometimes very unconsciously and not him really being aware of it so funnily enough he's created biases potentially that his father got a lot of praise and appreciation and had a lot of worthiness in the relationship for picking up all the heavy work in the relationship and not really asking for help this is quite a toxic masculinity here. Solving problems is his form of seeking achievement. And that also has a ripple effect into his own self-worth too. You also taking care of him and nurturing him is also seen as a threat to his position in the relationship and also his levels of masculinity. As we touched on before, men do operate in a dominance hierarchy inherently at times. And sometimes he thinks his status within the relationship is a bit rocky because he sees with his peer group and his parents potentially that the man is taking a lot of the burden and a lot of the, the problem solving and the ability to provide and, and not need help. So he thinks, gosh, if they're doing that, then I'm going to be at threat for my girlfriend, you, leaving me for another male because she doesn't want to deal with the drama or doesn't want extra burden or work. Men see emotions as sometimes a burden and doesn't want to add to your plate. So my advice for you, Nadalade, is again, use the powerful question, how can I support you? Non-conflicting, non-diggy, great question. Another one, you look a little tired. I'd be happy to help. Again, you've empathized and you've steered what he's burdened with. Him knowing that you'll be happy helping him is an ability in his own way to emotionally provide for you. So a great way to reverse engineer that situation. But to be honest there, Natalade, you've got a keeper. He sounds like a great guy. He may just need a little nudge in the right direction and given affirmations that it's okay to rest and let the feminine lead the way. Another brilliant question, on to the next one. So Anya says, why are men so apprehensive about having children? Deep. So let's break down what children means for a man. There's a few hidden underlying meanings we probably haven't unpacked here. Children means commitment. Children means father a title for the man to uphold, more expectations put upon the man, and he doesn't want to disappoint. He might not be innately ready to become a father, and that's a very much a self-worth issue there. The word children also implies financial pressure, so he needs to be financially secure to really 
give it the old thumbs up. Children also implies becoming more feminine, nurturing, caring. So if they have a negative association or a low propensity for the feminine aspect, they'll feel like this is a, another ability to judge them. It's usually some inward questions to ask. Is their relationship to the feminine fully healed? Do they mistrust their ability? Another association to children is pain. The what if divorce happens? What if these children then have split up parents? This is always down to parental patterning or have seen on, in society or from peer groups again, being influenced by somebody else's stories that have impacted them negatively. They don't wanna put that burden upon their child if things do go wrong. But that what if thing and the fear of missing out here is really detrimental to the commitment to children. So as you can see, children can become a little bit more complicated. Why? the masculine or some men are insecure or hold back from having children because their life is perceived to get messier. So I would say to you there, Anya, is that that is a huge test to see if this guy is worth having children with. Do they see a future with you and see you together with them being a brilliant life team partnership? And they're the biggest two questions to really ask. So Julia says why men are interested in a serious relationship and have tried, but just don't like being in one. It's usually the association to a serious relationship men put upon it. They've usually had past pain, past hurt within serious relationships that they're afraid to re-experience. It could be unhealed trauma. They haven't really asked those deep questions about themselves and own parts of themselves that they fear coming up in a serious relationship. So they may even have an anxious avoidant attachment style. And this pattern usually shows up when intimacy starts to spark off. They start to feel scared of that sense of depth. They're uncomfortable about the process of opening up. They risk being mistreated and her again. So that ideology there is why they tend to adopt a defenses relationship around love. Just be careful with these anxious avoidant attachment style males because they could potentially be charming, manipulating, or promising you a future that never really existed in the first place. What happens is they're using you as a form of short-term comfort. You may see this as a form of connection, but really that's their way of emotionally bonding with you and a form of faux intimacy, a fake intimacy that was never really there. You are a temporary healing energy for a wound they have yet to meet. But empathizing with the masculine here, I also went through the fear of commitment to jazz. Before jazz, I was worried about my liberty and my freedom being taken away. The fear of missing out. The what ifs, what could my life look like if it were to be with somebody else I used to have a crush with? But I soon noticed this was a seriously egoic and self-serving motivation and actually extremely destructive to the way I viewed life and the way I viewed myself. As soon as I committed to jazz in a serious relationship, the moment my life became more focused, the moment I became more respected, not by myself, but other people too. Jazz has expanded me in so many dimensions and I would never have changed a thing. Sometimes it's usually us talking ourselves out of a situation and usually self-sabotaging our needs from what is actually best for us but we love to talk ourselves out of success. It's damaging if you are super attractive because all the women will start to trend over to you and if you're sleeping around all those women, then all the men without partners feel a little bit hard done by, don't they? They're left with their Thursday nights on their right hand instead of actually having a loving, cherishing, nurturing partner. So it's a commitment to a man's responsibility to start seeking that life partner as soon as possible. I hope that helped there, Julia, to understand the inside workings of a male brain on commitment. The next question from Glyn, wild stallion versus not hurting women. How do I live a life without breaking hearts? So that's a beautiful, honest and transparent question there, Glyn. Let's unpack it, shall we? Like a wild stallion. Would. But this is a very extreme traditional masculine approach. But here's a twist to my response. The masculinity has a responsibility for their actions. So you must communicate clearly to every partner you have that tendency. I'm all for your belief if you are polyamorous and you'd like to have that freedom and what happens is with high creativity and openness, there are entrepreneurs out there who love to have a, you know, a group orgy and things like that. I'm not anti that at all but just make sure you're communicating that that is what you enjoy. That is how you live your life and how you want to continue living. Do you need to communicate to make sure that the partner that you meddle around with is emotionally ready? Emotionally ready for that rejection. Emotionally ready for a 
lack of a future with you. Though I love the idea of experimenting if you don't know what you want, but actually it could be a lack of respect for yourself. And breaking other people's hearts is not only imposing that upon other people, but it's also treating yourself in the same manner. If you're empathetic in the slightest, then you're gonna absorb energy, absorb rejection, absorb people's responses to you when you have mistreated them. That is damaging. I think everybody is sensitive in their essence, however psychopathic or unemotional you are. You absorb as a sensitive heart from the essence you are as a child. All of that rejection, all of that misinterpretation, all of that unresponsive action. And so you kind of have to have that real conversation with yourself. Are you living authentic to yourself or are you glorifying ideals to be that damn Bilzerian of the man culture? Is it an egoic need to sleep around? Is it a hedonic need that you want to fulfill? Meaning that is that your status? Is that just pleasurable? Is this really looking at trading and sacrificing the now for a better future? Think about that question. And I'm also assuming this is sexual intimacy too. So sexual intimacy is sacred. Sex is a communion, a deep communion. It's almost like, I love this analogy, but it's like you're downloading energy with a USB stick into a female pore, holding it for yourself. So be careful that's not viruses, not in an STD sense here, but a genuine energy virus, and then starting to spread it around. Taking responsibility for your own energy, cleansing your own energy, and moving into sexual intimacy in a more pure form. Sometimes maybe you want to slow things down. As a person with high creativity, openness, maybe you want to meditate, breathe, and realize from the core, is this true actions to what my sensitive heart wants? And you might want to look at your relationship with love and commitment too. If it's unhealed, this could be manifesting in the actions that are currently happening in this wild stallion approach. And it'd be great to have those deep dive questions with yourself. Thanks again for being so transparent, Nicklin. And it's a very common issue that both men and women face. So Michelle says, is it normal that men don't make it obvious if they like you? Quite normal. They like to play it cool. Cool is a common denominator amongst men. It's a denominator because the cultural ideas, what the movies we watch, the music we listen to, and the peer groups we share, all show off that this is a way of showing off your worth to a group. Not only your worth, but protection in a group. In a very traditional and very unconscious toxic culture in masculinity, which is very much the mass at the moment, and until we have a big conscious awakening, it's not gonna change. You showing off uncoolness, and uncoolness is like opening up with emotions, being a bit quirky, a bit authentic, and a bit out of the box, then you're a danger to the hierarchy and the structure and the control that that dominance hierarchy wants to to manage. The people at the top of that hierarchy want to be in control. And so those that are revolutionary to the system that's being inherently created here is dangerous to their position. So if you're anything like emotionally available or emotionally outward with your approach, you are a threat to not only the system, but also demonized for being out of the box here. So keeping a cool is a defensive mechanism to uphold your status within the dominance hierarchy. The masculine world is very much labor intensive, faced with lots of adversity. So you coming up with unpredictable emotions is seen as narcissistic to a structure. So they want to tailor you back into the group by saying, shut up, numb up, come on, you lady man, as Arnold Schwarzenegger would have put. This is a cultural message that's being portrayed on our media, on YouTube, everywhere we watch, that men can kind of man up. You're in a competitive space here and we have no time for emotions. We've got to get to the work, get the job done. You talk about your feelings, it's weak. So we've got to carry on. We've got a deadline to meet. Patriarchy still exists in corporate life. Even those that are intelligent and gone to university and gone to college, got an academic background, still adopt these belief sets. And it's very toxic. So using Arnold Schwarzenegger, him, denominating men as a lady man, we associate that lady man unconsciously to the mountain of a man he is. Whatever comes out of his mouth, we value highly. And so if he believes being more feminine is dangerous, we will too. Funnily enough, when I was in Thailand and I was a bit more physically built, I was, I was so adored. I felt like a celebrity just because I had a bit of muscle mass on me. And that's the issue. People adore the phys physical far more than the mental, the intellectual and the emotional. And this needs to completely make a quantum leap, otherwise we're all doomed. And back to your question here, Michelle, I say this because showing emotions, showing feeling, showing affection can sometimes be associated with and need to be feminine. So like I say, if the man has a 
bad relationship with the feminine and embodying the feminine, this could be avoided, alienated. And also the fact that they seem like they come off as interested but want to play it cool is because they're also afraid of being hurt. They are also wary of their current freedom. And what's interesting is men tend to be more responders. They fear rejection. They rather be the chase rather than the catch. It not only creates an urgency culture and a, an exclusivity for themselves in a weird self-worth and egoic way, but it gives them that inner satisfaction when they feel wanted. And I can relate to this experience too, because I also played it not hard to get and don't act too keen to jazz. I wasn't super fast to respond to jazz, nor overly seductive or needed. Especially while Jazz was away in Australia and me in Bali, we had that physical distance. And it was really hard, even those cravings of, I want to find out what she's up to. Knowing my experience being hurt in the past from dating before and being heartbroken actually, before I met Jazz, I played it cool and safe. I was cautious in my approach. And as that fun saying goes around, in absence, the mind grows fonder. And so in my absence, I wanted Jazz to kind of feel that connection to me. And it wasn't until it naturally developed between me and Jazz, taking all the feel good attraction hormones out of the equation, Jazz came back to Bali and I started to commit. I deleted all the dating apps and after a fair few first dates, I started to feel jazz and open up. You can see this as a tiered disclosure of liking your approach, as it's a great way to keep their emotional safety in check. But him playing it cool is not actually so much of a bad thing, but you need to look for signs that this guy is emotionally intelligent, conscious, and a ready human being for you. This doesn't mean they have to be completely healed to find you, but show a perceived readiness to commit to you, to fulfill your needs, your love language, and provide the emotional safety that you so yearn for. Hey, that is the wrap up to all the questions you asked. Phenomenal questions, uncovering loads of stuff. If you feel like you could add anything else about men in relationship, please comment below. Maybe ask another question I could do in another video. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Turn on that bell for any new videos that come out. If you want that extra urge or that extra bit of support, I have launched what I call the Heal Your Heartbreak mini course. And it's a very diverse, comprehensive and quick course you can get done within 10 minutes a day. But it's a brilliant way of working through some worksheets, listening to me like I am in this video, work through your self-awareness, finding your authentic gifts and starting to help you build boundaries, know your worth and stand in your power. So if that it sounds like something to you, then just download below, sign up. It'll take you three days and I'd love to see all the results that all my other clients are getting. From my heart to yours, you deserve all the love life has to offer. So again, if you love it, like it, do whatever you want with it, share it, have a brilliant day.